We studied the performance reporting pressure that the Securities and Exchange Commission face, uh, the SEC. Specifically, we focus on the performance reporting pressure that the Division of Enforcement staff internalize. We started looking through all of their case filings and noticed, wow, there are a lot in September. And as soon as we made the plot, month by month, the number of case filings, it became evident to us that we were onto something huge. The simple spike in September case filings, like I said, double to triple the amount in other months. And so we decided to take a deeper dive at that point. Every year uh, in September, they report on their performance to Congress and Congress evaluates them, decides if they do a, did a good or bad job and gives them more money. And the SEC is charged with investigating and when necessary, filing lawsuits against people who engage in financial misconduct. And what we find is the SEC tends to file most of their cases right before year end. You can actually see the filing date, whether it's in civil court or in the SEC's own administrative court, so we know exactly when they take all of their case filings throughout the year. And throughout the year, it's pretty constant until you get to September 1st and it starts to increase. Mid-September, it increases a lot. And by the end of September, it's probably double or triple where it normally is. We find it doesn't happen every year. It happens in the years in which the SEC is facing greater political pressure, um, when they're more likely to be lagging last year's case totals, or more towards the end of an SEC chair's tenure. Uh, and we also find it's due to greater leniency and the SEC prioritizing less complex or easier cases in a way to sort of pad the stats effectively in, in response to this performance reporting pressure. We also find it's stronger when they're behind last year's pace. So everyone wants to look good compared to how they did last year. Uh, and so when they're significantly trending last year, the effect tends to be much larger. Lower penalties, less sanctions, some evidence of being a little bit more lenient at year end to try to increase case volume. And you can also imagine if you're the person who committed misconduct and you know September's coming up and the SEC is looking to quote unquote make a deal, uh, you might be incentivized to stall for a little bit and then when September rolls around, try to lowball them on whatever type of offer you're willing to accept. This has potential implications on a couple of dimensions. First, if the SEC is receiving less financial sanctions from defendants, this ultimately is less money available to be returned to investors. It also can have this deterrence effect, this differential deterrence effect. If you are now providing lenient sanctions to, to defendants, well, this potentially means, well, the cost of, 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 the cost of conducting misconduct uh, is lower, which may incentivize greater uh, misconduct or effectively deter less misconduct. You don't want firms misreporting their earnings. Uh, you don't want people misrepresenting investment advice to various investors out there. So we want to deter all that type of misconduct. As the SEC is more consistent throughout the year, and if they stop being lenient in September, that will raise people's perception of the light or of the penalties if they get caught, which in theory should deter future misconduct and benefit all of us who have some type of money in the stock market.